tilt ships. Just like your regular ships, but with omnidirectionality. Vertical, sideways, upside down. If you can build it right, you can make it fly however you want. Malipayong adlaw sa inyong tanan, I am Phobos, and this is how I build tilt ships. To fly my ships, you need these mods. Make sure to use Valkyrian Skies Tournament version 1.1.0 or above. Do not power the thrusters without it. Links in description. We also need a few files from my GitHub repo. These are the schematic files and computer craft scripts that we will be using. Now that's ready, we can move on to the next step. Let's start by talking about ship frames. Basically your tilt ship's skeleton. Almost every tilt ship I made is built on top of one. I went ahead and built two for you to get started with. Mine are mostly made of sensors, computers, and thrusters, but I'm planning on building new ones that use less computers. In that video, I'll be showing you how to build your own custom frame. In the meantime, let's learn the basics using my default templates. We first prepare our computer craft turtles. Each of my templates uses three. Two for controlling the thrusters, the bow and stern, and one as the main computer. Now for the main computer, you can either use a regular or advanced turtle. But for the bow and stern controllers, the template is designed to use regular turtles. Advanced and regular turtles don't weigh the same. Using anything else that weighs different would affect the ship's pre-calculated inertia tensors. We'll talk more about them in a bit. Right now, we mount a wireless modem on each of our turtles for communication. We also mount another peripheral called the player detector peripheral on our main turtle. Our, our ship can fly without this. I just thought it would be convenient to install it now for the next video. Anyways, let's spawn in one of our templates using create schematics. Let's use the vertical one. Remember, do not rotate the schematic. Replace the glass blocks with your turtles. Make sure the bow and stern turtles face south. We then need to upgrade the thrusters to tier 2. Next, we get the turtles computer IDs. Go to our saves computer folder. Copy over the three folders that we downloaded. And then rename them as the computer IDs we saw earlier. Open the both turtles folder and edit the startup.lua script. Since we're using the vertical template, this turtle needs to run the vertical controller. Next, we edit the vertical controller script. We give it a new drone designation. Let's say 420. Next, we set the red net channel where the main turtle is going to talk with this turtle. Let's set it to 420 as well. Because why not? I'm sure no hive hacker is going to ever find that. Make sure this stays unique for each of your drone. We do the same thing for the stern controller. Now in the main turtles folder, we edit the firmware script.lua file. To match what we did to the bow and stern controllers, set the drone ID and drone to component broadcast channel both to 420. Since we are using the vertical template, we need to use this 10 thruster template class. Use this class instead if you want to use the horizontal template. Next, we assemble our ship. Use whatever you want, I'm using a Eureka helm. Before we fly, I want to show you some of the Valkyrian command lines. On assembly, the ship is given a random name. Type the following command to rename it. We type in the ship's current name, then rename it to something new and creative. If your ship flies off without you, you can use this command to get it back. Here, I'm teleporting it 5 blocks to the south of me. To make building easier, you can turn off your ship's physics for a while. With it set to true, the ship doesn't fall to the ground when we teleport it. Setting it to false turns the physics back on. Now that we're ready, let's get hovering. Reboot the bow and stern controllers. The startup.lua script should auto start. On the main turtle, we run firmware script. If everything goes well, it should start hovering. Smack it with a term and pulse gun, or drag it away with a clockwork gravitron to test its stability.
To turn it off, type in Q on the main turtle. This properly resets the redstone thrusters. We can do this remotely using rednet by sending the hush command. More on that in the next video. Now that we are comfortable with hovering, let's get flying. Let's tell it to move to a position, say up here. I'm going to mark it with a waypoint, just so we can see it better. Let's grab those coordinates and head back to our firmer script.lua file. Let's write down our new position here before we forget. Now to get it to move, we override one of our drone's functions. In this function, we set our drone's target global position variable to our new position. When we run the script in game, the ship flies to that position. Now how about we tell it to activate a redstone lamp when it reaches its destination. We can measure how far away the ship is from where it's supposed to be using the drone's position error variable. The error length shrinks to zero as the ship gets closer to its target position. We tell our ship to output a redstone signal if it's close enough. And none if not. Now as we run it, when it's close enough to the set position, the lamp lights up. If we take it away, the lamp turns off. Now let's have it turn to a direction. We need quaternions for this next part. We set the drone's orientation using the drone's target rotation variable. Know that it uses quaternions instead of Euler angles. Check the top right corner if you need a refresher on quaternions. Let's use this quaternion function for this example. We give it two vectors and it gives back a quaternion. We then multiply that quaternion with the target rotation to rotate it. Let's create two vectors, one that points upward and another to point west. Let's say when the ship reaches its destination, we want the ship's y-axis to point upward and to point west if not. Now let's say we want to sequence some actions, like visiting a list of waypoints. But first, it is important to know that yielding or delaying the custom flight loop behavior function is not allowed. That means we cannot use os.sleep as we would normally do in sequencing tasks. But since the custom flight loop behavior function runs in a while loop, a way around this is to have a timer variable that increments at every pass. Feel free to pause the video here. I coded it so that after it orients itself, it waits for 7 seconds before going to the next waypoint. Fly to next position, activate redstone, reorient ship, wait for 7 seconds, repeat. We can even interrupt the sequence and the drone will just start over from where it left off.
Now before you decide to add more blocks to the template, let's talk about inertia tensors for a bit. Inertia tensors are something that we use to calculate how much torque we need to spin a ship. What blocks you use and where you put it on a ship adds to the ship's inertia tensors. These thruster templates already have their own pre-calculated inertia tensors. That's why they're stable enough to fly on their own right out of the box. We might have been able to get away with adding one block to our ship here, but if we want to add more blocks, we would need to calculate new inertia tensors. Until VS2 computers release the next update, we need to calculate it ourselves in the meantime. I made a quick Java project to do just that. Links in description. Once you generated your ship's inertia tensors, copy them to our firmware script under the ship constants config table. If you build your ship too heavy, you might need to upgrade the thrusters or configure the tournament thruster speed in the mod menu. In that case, we need to tell our drone that it's using stronger thrusters. In our firmware script, under the ship constants config table, we need to override the following constants, thruster tier and mod configured thruster speed. I upgraded mine to tier 5 thrusters. Let's leave the second constant alone for now, tier 5 thrusters should be enough. If we did everything right, it should fly as usual. While I have your attention, for anyone who wants to skip the thrusters and all this Lua nonsense, I just want to directly use the full power of the Valkyrian physics engine using JavaScript. Valkyrian Skies 2 just released its new add-on called Cube VS. You ever wanted to make one of these? Or this? How about one of these? Or one of these? Or how about these? But you want to skip all of this? Well, now you can with Cube VS. No fancy Lua coding or thrust vectoring required. Much like how Cube JS lends you the power of JavaScript to even recreate a feature from an entirely different mod, Cube VS lends you the power of JavaScript to use the untapped potential of the VS2 physics engine, giving you the power to even create your very own Valkyrian Skies add on. Or, you know, you could also just use it to fling cubes off a cliff. Endless possibilities! Cube VS, try it out for yourselves, links in the description. But wait, there's more! If you don't like coding but you still want to build simple tilt ships, let me tell you about another VS2 add-on called Mechanica Ignition. It's planning to add more stuff to the game that'll let you build tilt ships easier. No coding required, so make sure to visit their Discord channel to tune in on their progress. Now back to you, Phobos! Ay, yeah, cabron. He blacked out for a second there. Anyways, there you have it. Valkyrian Skies Tilt Ships. I'll be releasing a guide on how to set up my hound turrets and geofish demo. In the next part of the series, I'll be talking about my Swarm UI and how to communicate with drones remotely. And I want to say thanks to the people that shown their support, it really means a lot. I couldn't have made it this far without you guys, so god bless you. See you in the next one, thanks for watching, ayo ayo.